So this belonged to Esther. That is lovely Esther right there. Look how beautiful she looks. Hey guys, it's Katie with Vintage and Vinyl, and guess what time it is? It's finally apartment tour time. I know a lot of you guys have been following me over on Instagram and TikTok and have been saying, Katie, when are you going to show us your apartment? Because I keep posting little snippets, teasing you all, but the time is finally here. I'm all moved in. I've got my art hung up on the walls, most of my collections put away, and I am so excited to share this with you. Now, I really didn't move far, just a few apartments down from the one I was living in. And I lived in the one bedroom before and that was just fine. But now that I've started doing reselling, I really needed an office where I could have all of my boxes, my shipping supplies, and of course, my ever-growing vinyl record collection. So we now have a separate room for all that and it just makes life so much easier. I've got my kitchen back. I can actually cook, which is nice. I don't have boxes all over the counters. It's just fantastic. And of course you can hear Louie going off in the background as Louie always does. She likes to be part of the videos. So I am so glad I get to show you the space. This is my entryway. We'll just start right now. And I love this little space here. When I come in, it is so wonderful and industrial. And that really is the theme of my home. Uh, what I have here is a 1950s Dorman parts display. If you know, you know, it's a fabulous piece. I've got the topper to an American chain uh, company uh, display. Uh, they would have had chains hanging down on this piece, but this is just the topper part of it. And I think the graphics are wonderful. I've got two vintage tire ashtrays. This one's from the 1935 uh, exposition uh, for Firestone at one of the, I'm assuming, World's Fairs, I think. Uh, this I bought from uh, Red's Antique. So if you don't follow him on Instagram, definitely go check him out. He's got such a cool account. And then these couple of things here I got from the World's Longest Yard Sale with Pam. This is a General Electric uh, amp meter, and it is just so cool. It is like copper, so industrial, so amazing, and I got a great deal on it. And then if you move up the wall here, I've kind of created a gallery wall with some of my little favorite things that just really didn't have a place other than on this wall, and I love them. I got the underground telephone cable porcelain enameled sign from the Telephone Museum in St. Louis. If you haven't watched that video, uh, go check it out because the folks there are just so wonderful, and I love, love, love that piece. I also got the cable root uh, enamel, enamel, I think, mm, 
might be metal, sign from them. And then I have the Toledo Times, first with the news. I got that over at Eco Relics a long time ago. And then, of course, my uh, TMT Tax New York taxi cab. Uh, not taxi cab, but... Um, oh, come on, Katie. <laughs> Get with the program here. This is for uh, people that had to drive deliveries, like for a truck. There was a certain tax, and they had to have a special license plate, and that's what this uh, license plate is for. So not taxis, but it's very cool. I got that at Old Good Things in New York. So just a little happy wall here filled with some of my favorite things. Another thing that I really like is this Otis Elevator control panel sign. It is solid copper. It is amazing. I believe this is from the 30s or 40s, and it's just fantastic. And then I also have a 1947 multi-mite substation circuit breaker panel here, which is just so cool. I got that also at Old Good Things, which I love. If you're ever in New York City, it's a fabulous place to check out. And then one of the coolest pieces on this wall, I think, is this light. I got this at a place in St. Augustine, and what I think is so cool about it is this is actually from an old Navy ship that sailed during the Cold War, and the gentleman has made this into a light, and I just think this is so cool. When I saw it, I had to have it, and it's perfect for my little industrial space. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close the door here so you can see sort of around the door. I just love filling my home with art and design and all kinds of colors and just things that make me happy and industrial art makes me happy. I love all of the old lithography on some of these metal pieces. They're just gorgeous and they have such cool graphics, things that we just don't see nowadays. So this Imperial Fittings Service Center topper came from an old display in a hardware store. They sold all kinds of plumbing fixtures, and I just think it looks really cool here above my door. Now, going back to this little cabinet here that I had my uh, wonderful doorman piece on, I actually got this with Ariana and Pam when I was in Tennessee. And this, I don't know how I saw it, honestly, because it was kind of hidden in the back of this lady's booth. But, you know, I love my metal drawers, and I caught my eye. It's an Acme drawer cabinet from the 1950s, and this would have held the logs for a different part. So if you open up these little drawers here, there's these little labeled pieces here, and they've got the inventory control for different parts. And I don't know that I've opened up the right drawer, but one of the drawers actually shows you that these were for screws and different things. You can kind of see it here. Brake, hose, bushing. So this would have been a car parts piece, but there's another drawer that's got places for screws. Uh, and I think that is just so cool. So I love this little cabinet here. It is just a great piece by my entryway door. And when I saw it, I knew it was the perfect size. I got a great deal on it and it had to come home with me. <laughs> now, the other thing you see when you walk into my apartment is this wall over here, and oh my gosh, Bucky did a fabulous job with this. Bucky is a local gentleman here that does some great work with art and hanging art. He can hang all kinds of things that are really heavy and awkward, so I had him come and hang a couple of things that Frankly, I just didn't want to take the chance would fall off and hurt Louie because a lot of my pieces are metal, they're very heavy, and so I just let him hang them and make sure they were hung correctly, uh, and he did a great job. So this wall is one of my Coca-Cola gallery walls. I have my big master ice cooler from the 40s for Coca-Cola. It is so cool, it's on like a mason board, which they did during the 40s, uh, primarily because all the metal was being used up during the war, which I think is so cool. I've got some of my Coca-Cola thermometers. This is neat. This is a little book jacket. They would have given this away in kits to schools. I don't know the exact date on this. I used to, but I'll have to look closely and put it here on the screen for you. 
And then I've got some other fun pieces. Uh, these are bottle drip protectors. So they would have been on the Coca-Cola bottles to prevent sweating of the condensation on the bottles. I'm sure you could have gotten these with your, your bottle of Coca-Cola wherever you bought Coke. Probably mostly though, I would assume in a diner or something like that. Um, but they're so cool. I really don't know how they worked because they're paper and the condensation seems like it would just make them melt into a big puddle, but they're amazing. And it's so cool that they've survived all these years. So I had them framed. I also have this piece here. Now this came off of a bigger piece. This is a little plaque that would have been mounted on a square piece like this. They also had vertical panels uh, and it was basically a framed display to advertise Coke, which is so cool. And then of course I bought this from Misty back when I first started getting into uh, the vintage community on YouTube, way before I even had a channel and Misty was still running her store. Uh, and this is a good 1960s Coca-Cola fishtail sign. It has been cut off on the side, but that doesn't bother me. I just think it's so cool. And then this other sign here is amazing. I bought this off of eBay and it has kind of a neat story. I had been looking for one of these watermelon signs. That's what they're called in the world of Coca-Cola collecting, but they're so expensive. If you find an original one, oh my gosh, they're like upwards of $1,000 depending on condition. And I saw this guy on eBay that had one for like a hundred bucks and I thought that can't be, I mean, it has to be a scam or repro something. So I emailed him and I said, hey, can you send me some up close pictures of the markings? Cause I really wanted to verify that it was a legit sign. And he said, sure. He said, I'm just trying to get rid of these. My neighbor's barn washed away and we found a bunch of them in the barn walls of all different types of sodas. And he said, I guess that they were trying to use it as insulation back in the day, which of course a lot of people did do with these old signs. You'll find them in house walls and attics and barns. I mean, it's very common. And so he just found a bunch of them. They washed up into his yard and he wanted to get rid of them. So I bought this off of this gentleman. It was in fact an original watermelon sign marked 1933, the American Artworks uh, Incorporated, Coshocton, Ohio. It had all those marks and I was just thrilled. So it lives here now. And then on the yard sale, of course, I picked up this beauty, which is a wonderful 1960s Coca-Cola fishtail menu board sign in really nice condition. And it's a good one, y'all. Look at that Robertson mark right there, 1961. Gosh, that is just pure gorgeous. And then from one of my sign buddies here in town, I picked up this. Uh, he deals in Coca-Cola advertising. In fact, he used to buy the buttons for Cracker Barrel. And yes, Cracker Barrel does have all original antiques. Uh, in their stores. And that's the reason why buttons are so hard to find because Cracker Barrel has so many of them. <laughs> but this is a really cool little piece. It is a 1960s uh, Coca-Cola calendar holder. So you would have put the calendar on the little pegs there. And I just think that is so cool. And then one of the last pieces that I really prize on this wall is this lovely lady here. She is very hard to find. She is a thermometer. Uh, now my thermometer is missing, but that is okay. I'm just thrilled to have the piece in my collection. And I got this from Eco Relics, the lady that had all of the advertising that I've shared with you before on my channel. She and her husband were antiques dealers. They had a massive collection of advertising that uh, Eco Relics bought and sold. I got this from them, which is so cool. And I'm glad that I could have a little piece of their collection in my collection now in my home. I just love this wall and I think it came together so incredibly well and it just makes me really, really happy. All right, so let's move on to the kitchen. Now I'm still kind of getting everything put away from Hurricane Ian. So of course, 
just ignore the massive amounts of water that I have here. <laughs> I will drink them, uh, but it's going to take me a while. But of course, you can never be too prepared during hurricane season. So I've got those there. But this is my kitchen, and I really love the layout in here. I've got my refrigerator and stove and sink all within that working triangle that they talk about when you design kitchens, and it's just so handy. And I love having my countertop back. It's actually clear from boxes and bubble wrap, which is marvelous. Uh, but let me show you some of the special things here in my kitchen. Uh, on my refrigerator, one of the first things you'll notice is this little magnetic clip. And this isn't just any magnetic clip. This is a Bonifield Brothers truck line clip. And this actually belonged uh, to my grandparents, but my grandmother's mother's brothers actually owned a truck line, the Bonifield Brothers. And this was one of their advertising pieces. And oh, I am just beyond thrilled to have this. This was on my grandparents' fridge growing up. Grandma uh, BB, we called her BB, always had notes clipped to it, and I just think it's fabulous. I love it. And then another piece that was always in their house is this little plaque. It's really not something that normally I would gravitate to, but I love the fact that every time I would cook with BB in her kitchen, she would uh, tell me about this plaque and how her parents gave it to uh, my grandfather, Papa, and I just think it's hilarious. So it says, mother-in-laws are like seeds. You don't need them, but they come with the tomato. <laughs> so of course I had to have this plaque uh, in my own kitchen because it just reminds me of all those wonderful times cooking with BB and listening to her stories. And I think it just is fantastic. And of course, next to that, I've got her cookbooks and my great grandmother's fruit bowl. So that's kind of some of the fun things I have uh, on top of my refrigerator there. And then of course you guys helped me decorate this little area. Now, of course, I've added some things since then. I have these beautiful uh, antique garden spinach labels. Uh, these are electric brand. I've got two of them, one spinach and one is pumpkins. Uh, but this would have come off of an old can and I believe the date on this is 1906. So it is gorgeous. It is not a reproduction. And I just think the graphics are absolutely gorgeous on this. And I had it framed and it's hanging now in my kitchen. A couple of other things I really love on this counter here, of course, is another Bonifield's advertising piece. My uh, Safety First Drink Coca-Cola. This would have been sitting down in the road they had a bunch of these and it would have helped children cross the street safely. So they were like little markers. If you look on the back, this one is dated 1933. Of course, when the war hit, they took a lot of these up because they needed the brass for the war efforts. Uh, I believe they're Dr. Pepper ones as well, but I think that is so cool. And then I've got a couple of other neat pieces here. These White King pieces uh, I actually got separately. This one came from Abby over at Cozy Curated Cottage. It is the dispenser for the White King soap and oh, the graphics are amazing. And of course I found the White King uh, soap box from the advertising couple over at Eco Relics. So I just love that. It was meant to be that I've got two of them together. And then of course I have this amazing Florida milk bottle with five cents on it. Um, Alex from Chapter Two Vintage Co. gave this to me and it's a prize in my collection. She said that it was dug up out of the ground in Tennessee of all places. So I think that is really neat and I just love that. And then of course, I've got my jar of tape measures. Now this planter's jar is a true original. Uh, I got this from my grandparents on my mom's side. Uh, we were going through their basement and we found this box with this jar and my mom was just ready to donate it because, you know, it wasn't of interest to her. And I was like, no, that's an original 1930s planter's jar. And it turns out that this belonged to my great-grandfather's cousin. Uh, her husband was a pharmacist. 
and this was the jar that they had in their pharmacy and then later on in their kitchen which i think is so cool so it's an original advertising jar for planters peanuts with the little planter peanut finial at the top which just makes me so happy and inside i have all kinds of tape measures but i have three that are very special to me one is the bonifield brothers tape measure that is just so fantastic and amazing and then i have my grandfather's tape measure from his workshop and i have one of the advertising tape measures that he got when he worked at the radio station uh, so i think that is so cool so all three of those special tape measures can always be seen from the outside and of course many of you guys have sent me tape measures and i so appreciate them and they are in this fabulous jar here i've just got some other great pieces from family here uh, i do love uranium glass i think the glass is just a nice juxtaposition against some of the industrial stuff that i have and I just think it's so cool. I also love this apothecary scale, probably from the late 18, early 1900s, I would think. Uh, the last service date on this was 1970. That was when it was last used or serviced. This is a French apothecary scale, and I think it is absolutely fabulous. It's got the copper little bowls there and oh it is just amazing with all of my glass and advertising here here's that other electric brand piece that i was telling you about with the golden pumpkin oh man those graphics are just so cool so some of the things you'll notice throughout my home that's sort of a theme is i love things that feature vintage lightning bolts and i love things that feature uh, suits of cards uh, among other advertising, uh, but this is just one of my favorite things. So the kitchen is just a great little piece here off of the uh, living room, which I like because I love to entertain and have dinner parties with all of my vintage glassware from my grandmother. It's so much fun and it's nice to have that open concept. Now, this little table on the end is spectacular. It belonged to this fabulous little lady here. That's Marjorie Thompson. She was my great-grandmother, who I was named after. It was her sister's table. And I think that this is just stunning. It is a solid wood table that does open up. And it's got all of this gorgeous detail here on the bottom with these brass feet. Oh my gosh, is that not amazing? And it rolls. I just adore this table and I'm so glad to have it. It fits perfectly on this little end cap here. And I think it is a real stunner. So I really try in my apartment, if I have something from a particular family member, I try to put their picture with it. You know, I, I, I really like that. Of course, I'm not finished putting all of my family photos uh, around, but I love all the vintage photographs. And I'm in the process of going through some of them with my dad and my grandma to get them printed up and framed so I can add some more around here. I also have this really cool piece. This is a cut plug tobacco cutter. It would have been bolted to a tobacconist's workbench. Uh, workbench is probably not the right word. I would say counter in like a tobacconist or pharmacy, wherever you would buy tobacco. And then you could get your tobacco cut. So you would buy a little bit of cut plug tobacco. The blade is down there. It opens up and you can cut it. And this one is a true original. Uh, it is beautiful. It's the little uh, elf thumbing his nose at the world. And what's pretty cool about him is on the bottom, he's marked that he was repaired in 1955 at a particular store. So I do know that he's been around a while and he is so cool. And of course, I've got my 1950s uh, Craftsman wrench display. Gotta love all of these old advertising displays. They just make me so happy. And I've got more pieces over here. This is another statement piece in my house. And it's something that I was really honored to have. This belonged to my great grandmother on my 
uh, grandma's side. And it is just gorgeous. So this belonged to Esther. That is lovely Esther right there. Look how beautiful she looks. She was probably 20 or 30 years old in that photo. And then there's my grandma. So I've got both of them together on the sewing table. And this piece here is a Red Eye 1916 Singer sewing machine. And what's pretty cool about the Red Eyes is that you can tell it's a Red Eye because it has these little Red Eye details going around the sewing machine. And at the time, this was one of the best models that you could buy. And my grandmother was a real, my great grandmother, I should say, was really good at sewing. She was just amazing. And she made quilts and all kinds of things. In fact, grandma told me that she would have these quilting parties. And when the quilting parties were over, she would go back and fix all the stitches of the quilts that were done incorrectly, which I think is just hilarious and also fabulous. And it speaks to how well uh, she could sew. I just love uh, the sewing table. I've kept all the drawers just as she had them. So except for this drawer, I've got some stuff that I put on top, but all of them are just exactly how she left them. There are thread in all of the drawers and yarn and all kinds of sewing scissors. Look at this little neat advertising piece here for uh, the sewing needles. Isn't that cool? So the drawers are just chock-a-block full with cool stuff. I think there's some buttons and things in here. So it's just a really amazing piece. And then of course I've got some uh, Art Deco bottles I put here to go with it. Uh, these really don't have anything to do with sewing, but the light catches them, and it's so neat to see them when you walk by. I've got this amazing chaperone uh, dog bottle. This is actually dog repellent, which is hilarious. I'm not sure why you would ever need this. Well, I guess for dogs that aren't friendly. But at the time, it was 60 cents, and it's got that kind of skyscraper effect that I love on old Art Deco bottles. And then we've got a water wax bottle. That's a mouthful. This is something to do with cleaning cars, radios, pianos, and furniture, but it's still got the original liquid in it, which is amazing, and the paper label. And then of course, I've got a Presto New, keeps automobiles new. And look at the graphics on that. Oh, what a stunner. So I love that. And then above the sewing machine, I have some more advertising pieces. I've got my Ilco key display from the 1940s, this Globe Master adjustable levels display. Now, one of the things I love also, going back to kind of themes within graphics, is I love globes. And so when I saw that this piece had a little globe on it, you know, it had to come home. So these two I think are perfect here because they're long and they just look great above the sewing machine. Now this piece above my door, the jury is still out on this on whether or not this is a true original. I've asked several sign guys and they said, well, there's quite a few holes in that piece. If you can see there's one, two, three, one, two, three, three holes top and bottom to hang it. Normally you wouldn't put that many holes in a lightweight sign. So that kind of raised the question to some of my advertising buddies whether or not this was a fantasy item, which in the advertising or collecting world basically just means an item that wasn't original, that was kind of made up. Uh, but I think whether or not it's an original or a fake, it is really cool. And it is for Pimar plastic pipe fittings. Now, the, the person I got this from has an eBay store. I will link them down below. They are really amazing. They are great packers and they have some cool stuff. And he told me that he got it from a gentleman out of Western Pennsylvania who bought it from a hardware store when they were closing. So it seems to me that it is original, but I just love the graphics on it. The colors are fabulous and it makes me happy. So I think it's great. And then going into my living room here, we're gonna be backlit a little bit. So I'll try to, try to move out of the window. <laughs> 
I've got my Chesterfield sofa. I'm still on the hunt for a vintage one. This one just came from World Market, nothing particularly special, but it was on sale and it's super comfortable, so I'm very happy. And then I've got my spool table here with my collection of oil cans and other little odd and unique items. I haven't quite gotten this table to the way that I want it uh, as far as design goes. I love the oil cans going around the bottom, but there's quite a bit on the table here and I haven't really gotten the layout just right yet. Uh, so I've posted several reels featuring some of these items and they're just so cool. I've got some of my celluloid pocket mirrors and advertising pieces here, one for Remington, one for uh, wood floor surfacers. And uh, this one actually came from Vintage Me Oh My. If you do not follow him, he has an incredible account. And I am so glad to own something from his personal collection. So that is a real treat. And then I've got uh, my great grandmother's opera glasses here in this little neat leather case with her name on it. And uh, my great grandfather's glasses here. I think that is so cool in the original case. And then my grandfather, Papa, I have his clay marbles in an old powder tin which is just really fabulous. And uh, some other neat little things here on this table. Look at this 1800s clinch rivet tin. Is that not amazing? The graphics on that are to die for. And then I've got my uh, great grandfather's business cards from the radio station. And look at this guys, they're made out of like a thin wood. They are just so cool. So I'm honored to have a couple of those. But again, I haven't quite worked out the display here, but this is what we're working with for right now. And one of the prize things in my apartment here is this little chess set. Now my, my mom brought this back from Vietnam, I believe. And if I open it up, what it has inside is the chess set that my grandfather hand carved when he was just 14 on the lathe. And he taught me to do woodworking and lathe work. And so this is really just a special piece. And I am just honored beyond words to have this. And it sits here and of course, so the camera just stopped. I don't know where it cut me off, but this is a handwritten note that I got when I got this chess set with some hints about what the chess set uh, was going to be. And she wrote, it has 32 parts and is brown and tan and it is over 70 years old. So I think that's very special. And then a little typewriter note card uh, from my grandfather. And he was writing in this note uh, to tell me that he was writing with a pen that I had made for him on the lathe that he got me. And uh, he just thought it was the most beautiful thing. So this uh, is very, very special to me and I'm just thrilled to have it in my apartment. Now I'm going to show you this over here. I've got so many little things that we're not going to be able to go through every piece in my apartment. I might have to do a whole separate video on some of my collections because I do, I do have a lot. But this is fun. This is a 1940s spring display from an old hardware store and it is filled with springs. Let me see if I can get one of these things open. So it's still got all the springs in it, which I think is just so cool. And then my grandparents' neighbor, Roger Allgood, his dad owned a car dealership and he had a bunch of these crates from the car dealership. So he gave it to me and I love it. So it sits here above uh, my spring display. And then one of the other special pieces on this little cabinet here from the 50s is this soda bottle. And it's one of those bottles that you, you know, press the top down and the little marble goes down and then the fizz releases into the soda. This was my grandparents, uh, my dad's parents. And every time I would go to BB and Papa's house, BB would uh, go into the back room where they had the TV and she would tell me all about this bottle. And I just thought it was so cool. And now it sits here and I get to admire it every day. So it's just a neat little piece from my grandparents. And speaking of my grandparents, I got this clock from them. 
This is a real beauty. Now, I don't have the weights yet. My dad is bringing that to me. Uh, we've kind of been getting some of the things from their house uh, to me in different uh, kind of deliveries, if you will. And uh, so he's got the weights and they'll be coming soon. But I got the clock hung up and this is a cuckoo clock that my dad and mom bought for them in Germany. And it is beautiful. And to me, this is just one of the most comforting sounds. It reminds me of going to their house and BB cooking in the kitchen and bringing me a scotch bread cookie and hot chocolate and sitting under the cuckoo clock and hearing it go off. And I just absolutely adore this. And it is a real prize in my collection here. And then on the top of this cabinet, on the other side, I have this parking meter. Now I've told this story before but I bought this from a lady in St. Augustine and I got a killer deal on it and what I think is so interesting is when I asked the lady hey do you know anything about this and she reached out to the dealer the dealer came back with the most fabulous story and basically he told me that he bought it from a lady who backed over it in New York City in 1950 and was so afraid that the police were going to get her that she chucked it into her son's truck, covered it up with a blanket and drove off. And so I now have a stolen parking meter from 1950 in New York City. I guess the guy got it from that lady. And what I think is so funny is when she hit it, it got stuck in the violation position. <laughs> So I love the parking meter, love the story, and I just think it's so fabulous. Now, one of the other prize pieces in my house, and I say that a lot because, man, I just love being surrounded by all the little treasures and neat things I have that I've collected and, and of course, from family. But this is my 1950s cabinet. Now, my other apartment, I had it full of records. But now I have a place for all of my tobacco tins and aren't they just fabulous. Now, if you are not following Hud's Curios over on Instagram, stop this video and go follow him. Peter is just delightful. He lives in England and I buy a lot of my tins from him. And of course, one of my uh, prized tins is this Hignant's golden butterfly tin. I got this from him. He messaged me one day and said, Kiki, I have a surprise for you. And I said, what is it, Peter? And it was this gorgeous tin. I just adore it. I think the graphics are wonderful. It's very hard to find. And so I really enjoy collecting some of these tobacco tins that are just not easy to find that have amazing lithography on them because we just don't make things like this anymore. Another favorite of mine is the Honeymoon in the Times Square. I also love this possum tin. This actually had my grandfather's, uh, I think they were dominoes that were in here. But my dad came out of a room holding this little tin and said, look at these dominoes. And my dad was more interested in the dominoes. And I was about to die because here was this very rare possum cigar tin that I had been hoping to find, and here it was. And not only was it in the present moment, but it was also my grandfather's. And I just thought that was incredibly awesome. So I have a possum cigar tin now, and I just think it is so cool. So this is my little cabinet of fun treasures, tins, advertising displays, and all kinds of amazing graphics to just make you happy. Because to me, there is nothing like a vintage graphic. Over here, we have my TV, my stereo, and all kinds of wonderful things. This cabinet is not vintage, but it does have a bunch of amazing bottles on it that belong to my great-grandfather's cousin, Evelyn. The one that I told you had the planter's peanut jar. Well, her husband was a pharmacist, as I mentioned, and these were bottles from his uh, pharmacy, which I think is just so cool. So here they all are in all of their glory. And I put them here because I love the way the light comes in and hits the amber and the clear glass and just really makes it shine. It is quite spectacular on a really bright sunny day.
And then here is my stereo. Now I drove all the way to Missouri to pick this up from my buddy Blake over at Mid-Century Wasted. That's Mr. Mid-Century, you all know Jamie. And uh, this is just such a fabulous piece. It's a vintage Marantz. It is gorgeous. It is the 2220 model number. And then we have these amazing 1950s university speakers. And they are gorgeous. Maybe these are 1960s, 1950s or 1960s, but they've got the wood cabinets, the gold grill with the little university tag on the front. Just amazing. The sound quality is great. Nothing beats vintage. And of course, I've got my Fluence turntable. I've talked a lot about this. Can't go wrong with Fluence if you're buying an affordable new turntable. And I just love this whole setup. It is perfect. And now I'm going to take you over here. This cabinet is very special. Uh, I was so lucky to get this from my grandmother. Uh, she was cleaning out uh, the radio station tower and found this and thought, oh, Katie could use this in her workshop. Well, I wasn't going to use this in my workshop. It was coming straight into my house. And I have my DVDs in here. I have CDs and uh, all kinds of other little things that I store. But it is a vintage, amazing, amazing steel master cabinet. Get a look at that amazing logo from the KFES radio station, which is so cool. And I've got all of these little fun things on top just displayed here. I think it is amazing. I just love the industrial look of these cabinets. To me, there is just something about an industrial cabinet that's beautiful because it was made to be so practical, but yet in that practicality, somebody took the time to design it and make it pretty. And I just think that is so cool. Of course, it's got all of the original little labels on the drawers. And I love that they were left on because that just makes everything much cooler. And I think this is just a perfect piece to go along with my industrial displays. Now, uh, I've got two chairs here and a little table. This is my great grandparents table. Uh, my grandmother has the matching coffee table. I just have the little end table and it is just fantastic. Look at all that detail on it. A beautiful, beautiful piece. And then I've got this. This is a 1930s lathe lamp. Now, I'm not sure what factory this came out of, but it is porcelain enamel and it is absolutely stunning. So I am thrilled to have this. I bought this from a guy on eBay and it works. I just don't have a way to plug it in since there's no plug on the floor here but it is fabulous. And then I've shown you a little bit of my spool table, but I didn't really show you my oil cans. I have quite a few oil cans that I've been collecting. I really like the oil cans that have graphics that speak to me. The Empire State is one of my favorites. Of course, because of New York, I've got this traffic can. Most of these are fairly hard to come by. The meter, the traffic, the penroline, you're not going to find these every day, and that's what I love about them. Kind of the, the thrill and the challenge of trying to find a rare can. This is so exciting. Uh, this spool table here, I actually salvaged from the building I'm living in. I was actually living in another building, and I drove by one day, and my friend was in the car, and I said to her, I would love one of these because I want to make a table out of them. And she said, well, just go take it. I said, well, you can't just take stuff from a construction site. She said, there's a guy there. Pull over and ask him. I said, that guy's got a dog. He doesn't live here or work here or know anything about these. She said, just go ask him. So, of course, I pulled over the car. We got out and asked the guy. Lo and behold, he was the building manager uh, for this building. He was head of all the electrical and he said, oh yeah, just take them. We don't want to pay for them to get hauled away, so have as many of them as you want. So I grabbed this one with the best graphics on the front. We loaded it into my car, 
and uh, drove down the street. In fact, my other friend who was with me had to climb into the back of the car and hold this whole spool in so that it wouldn't go rolling down the street as I brought it home. <laughs> oh, the things we do for uh, wonderful treasures, right? But I got it home, I sanded it down, put a nice coating of uh, matte polyurethane on it, and here it is. It is now the center of my living room, and it is fabulous. And I have just decorated it here with all of these uh, oil cans as part of my collection going around the back, which I love. There's Around the World, we got Rocket, we got the good old Sinclair Dino Shell. This is my newest can. This 1930s wear all can. I love the graphics on it. And then we have the co op with the cool graphic of the world or the US on it. And then all American and coast to coast. So a lot of phone and oil cans with room to add more. All right, guys, we are continuing the tour. This is going to be a long video. I'll, I'll try not to make it so long. <laughs> But this is the display above my couch. Uh, I kind of wanted to create a theme in here that was industrial hardware store. So I wanted to kind of recreate a vintage hardware store. And this is what I've done with this wall. I have been collecting vintage hardware displays for many years now. And I've gotten quite a few of them. And I made this incredible gallery wall. Uh, this is a 1940s wire display, very hard to find, Tate. We have a 1920s Colombian Pure Manila rope uh, sign showcasing all the different rope sizes that you could buy. We got all the Larson displays, the I-bolts, the S-hooks, the U-bolts. We got some turnbuckles. We got rope hardware. Oh, and check this puppy out. We got Colorado nails. Look at all the different nails and sizes. Oh. I love that. This is one of my favorite pieces on this wall. We got quality crafted pliers, again with that globe. And all kinds of cool stuff. 1960s Lumpkin display for tape measures, fuller screwdrivers and wood chisels. Got the whole bit and I love it. So just some fabulous graphics. And then over here, I have this ladder. Now this is not an old ladder. Somebody made this out of two by fours. I actually got this with my mom at a craft fair, but I thought it was so cool. And my brain immediately said, what a great way to display things. So I put all of my tins on it. Not all, because I have a lot of tens, but some of my tens. So we've got the Simplex projector oil. I love this. This is for one of those old movie projectors. Uh, don't see a lot of these tens, so I do believe that one's pretty hard to find. I've got some fabulous pieces here, and then I love these wire spools. These are old wire spools, and check out the graphics on them. Look at that meter. Oh. The Meteor one is just fabulous with the little stars. We've got the Paramount with the globe. Oh, just amazing. And the lightning bolts, I love that. We've got some Hercules cutting oil, a 1940s uh, mobile gas with the Pegasus onboard gear oil, some Liberty polish, just some fun things that really do make me smile. And then over here, I've got a master display for master padlocks, probably from the 1930s. Look at that gorgeous display. Isn't it fabulous with all of the original brackets? And then over here, we have this beautiful piece. Now, this is a Royal Crown Cola mirror. It is original, and I got this from my grandparents. My dad's parents had this hanging uh, in their garage, and every time you'd walk into their house, uh, the, that mirror was there. And since I love advertising, and I just love seeing it every time I come uh, came into their house through the garage, it just really made me smile and made me happy. And it just reminds me so much of the wonderful times we had at BB and Papa's house. So I am more than honored to have this here hanging in my home. And of course, we got my beautiful porcelain enamel Pacific 
fence sign. That is hard to say, Pacific fence sign. Uh, but just a great little display here uh, with an old lamp, of course, and uh, one of those other metal cabinets because you can't have too many of them. <laughs> now, the last piece in my living room that I really want to show you is a very special piece that Bucky helped me make. And this is this piece above the TV. This has all of the tools on it that belonged to my great-grandfather, uh, Bibi's, uh, my, my grandmother, Bibi. Her dad was in the refrigeration business, uh, Grandpa Luke, and this, these were his tools, and I think they are amazing. I just absolutely love them. Uh, I, some of these, though, might have been Papa's. The chisels might have been Papa's, but I think most of them were Grandpa Luke's. Uh, and I had them mounted on this really cool industrial pegboard and hung here above the TV. And I think that they are just spectacular. And what a great way to honor him and, of course, his tools. And Dad always says that I got a lot of my handy skills from him. And I don't doubt that one minute because he was always making really amazing things in his basement. He was an inventor of sorts, too. He just invented all kinds of cool things and also was well known for his refrigeration business. So very cool and special display. All right, let's go into the bedroom, folks. All righty, guys. Well, this is my bedroom and I made the pallet headboard that you are seeing here out of an old pallet. And then, of course, I have the big propeller. This was a wonderful surprise and gift from Pam. Oak Grove uh, Mercantile over on Instagram, but of course she's Pamela Blanchard on YouTube. This was hanging in her house for years and years. She got this on the world's longest yard sale, and now it is hanging in my house. She wanted to give this to me, and I think it is spectacular. It is just such a cool piece, and it really does add the perfect industrial and unique element above my bed. It really pulls this whole room together, in my opinion, and uh, I absolutely love it. I've got some Coca-Cola advertisements, some of my printer's trays hanging on the wall. I've got this amazing uh, piece here. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Jacksonville Landing. You're probably not if you don't live in the Jacksonville, Florida area. But the Landing was the place to go in the 1990s. And unfortunately, they just tore it down. Uh, I guess it just wasn't what it used to be back in its heyday. So I went over to Eco Relics the minute I heard that they had gotten in some blueprints from the landing. And this was one of the original blueprints they found in an office there. And of course I had it framed. You can see part of the roof line and then the whole uh, landing there. But I just thought it was so cool to have this framed. A great way to remember the landing, one of my favorite places growing up as a kid, and it just is a cool little industrial uh, piece of art here in my home. So I love industrial as much as I love my glass. And I've got a lot of my glass collection here by the window so that you can really see it when the light shines through it. It just sparkles. It is spectacular. And of course, I had to mix in the industrial as well. This typewriter belonged to my great-grandfather's secretary. She actually won a typing contest on this. And this is a 1930s Underwood. It is amazing. And I'm so glad Grandpa saved this for me. He actually brought it down for my high school production of Words, Words, Words by David Ives so that we could use it in the production when the monkeys are all typing. And then I've just had it ever since. I've saved it and loved it. And now it's in my apartment sitting atop my grandparents' table. Uh, that was from their basement, which I just love the little Greek key and starburst pattern on. But I've also got my glass next to it, and there are so many family pieces on here that are just so special. But one of the pieces I wanted to highlight was my great-grandfather's cousin, Evelyn, who had the peanut jar and the pharmacy bottles. She also had these, and they are amazing. These were designed by uh, Fostoria designer George Saker in the 1930s, and these are the geometric pattern. I've got the two candlesticks here 
and the bowl. I was just burning some incense in here, so it's a little messy, but isn't it just spectacular? And then I've got the Tiffin glass pieces here from her as well. Also, of course, these beautiful Fostoria candlesticks. Uh, these are Fostoria Baroque. They are from the 20s or 30s, and these were sitting on Evelyn's piano. So I love them. They are spectacular. Just a great piece. And then, of course, I've got some oil cans, fabulous toolbox down there, some great, great chairs from Marjorie Thompson, the fabulous lady that owned the table. That was my uh, great-grandmother's sister. And then Evelyn's footstool down here, big cast iron footstool. And then, of course, we got the most important guy in the whole room, Taylor the pig. <laughs> This pig was in my grandparents' bedroom, and uh, my dad remembers them having this on their dresser. I think my grandpa, Papa, got this for some sort of church event that he was doing. He was a pastor, and it didn't work out. And so he ended up taking it home, and they used it as their piggy bank. And I have named him Taylor because my dad texted me and said, do you have, uh, are you enjoying, something about, are you enjoying the pig? And I texted back, yes, I love the pig. And he's in my bedroom. And I sent him a picture and dad texted back, yay, I'm so glad Taylor found a home. Well, I texted dad back and I said, I didn't know the pig had a name. And dad said, oh no, the pig doesn't. That was autocorrect. <laughs> So I have named him Taylor now because of the autocorrecting incident, but he is fabulous. He's so happy. Look at his little face. How could you not love him? He is just great. So he sits here, not very industrial, but very special and really cool. Uh, this is my, uh, let's see. This was Evelyn's. Yes, Evelyn's. This belonged to Evelyn Nunley, so my great-grandfather's cousin. Uh, this was her dresser, and it's got the little glove box drawers up here, so these would have been her gloves. But I've got my Swatch Watch collection in it, which is very cool. And I just think this is a gorgeous piece of furniture. I've got uh, some beautiful pieces up here. These are the tobacco molds that I've talked about. We've got my great-grandmother's uh, plates here hanging on the wall, just in the order that she had them, hanging above her couch. A really, really cool old gumball machine. And then a prize bookcase. The bookcase my grandfather built in the 1940s in Woodshop. And I have just all kinds of wonderful and special treasures from my travels, from family, amazing advertising on it, just things that really are so amazing and cool. Things that make me happy, and I hope they make you happy too, because you just can't surround yourself with boring things. You have to surround yourself with stuff that really makes your life spark with joy, because that's what it's all about, right? We gotta just enjoy life and enjoy our surroundings. Uh, so I've got some really cool things up here. The US stamp machine is from the 40s. I've got a beautiful 1800s card catalog, uh, 1800s, 1900s card catalog. And uh, that beautiful 1940s fire chief gasoline sign and just some really cool mystery clocks. Okay, so this is my bedroom. Now, I know you guys want to see my hats, so I'll show you my hats, and then we'll conclude this tour. Okay, so here is my closet, and here are all of my hats. I was just wearing this baseball cap this morning, so I took it off and put it there. But, yep, I've got all of my hats down here for all of you guys that are wondering. And then, of course, next to my hats, I had to have some vintage advertising. So we've got the Dobbs advertisement for hats, the Knox advertisement for hats. Got my top hats up here. Just some boring clothes. You guys are used to seeing me in plaid because I love my plaid and I got a lot of it. And then over here, 
Yes, this is where Kevin, the kangaroo, lives and all of my brooches. This is a fabulous little cabinet here that I picked up from a local antique mall for a steal of a deal. And I've got all of my brooches in here and this is my favorite drawer. All of my sparkly, amazing, just wow brooches are in here. This is an Amberg's letter file, probably from the late 1800s. It is beautiful. I love every part of this cabinet. It came from England. That's about all I know about it, but I love it. And it's perfect for holding all of my brooches. Got little Kevin the kangaroo there. And then I have my very special Mickey watch. This belonged to my grandfather, Papa. He was a pastor. And back in the 90s, Disney and the church just really didn't see eye to eye. But my grandfather didn't agree with it. And so he wore this Mickey watch and a Mickey tie every chance he got. Sort of as his little way of standing up for what was right. And I think that is so incredibly special and cool. And I just admired this watch when I was a kid because, of course, it had Mickey on it. And I am beyond thrilled to have this. And it sits here every day, so I'm always reminded of Papa when I get dressed. And next to it, I have my grandfather's mirror that was hanging in his childhood bedroom. And then I've got another fun advertisement for Stetson Hats. A beautiful little, I think this is embroidered or... I don't know, crocheted, knit. I'm not very good at distinguishing all the differences of those, but that was something that my mom brought back from England when she was in college. So that's awfully special. And then I've got this fun little boot display. I'd originally picked this up to sell, and then my rain boots just fit perfectly in it. And I thought, nope, it's got to live back here in the closet. <laughs> All right, guys, so the last room is really my office. Now, I'm going to warn you, this is a mess. We're just going to take a quick peek in here, but right now, this is still a major work in progress. I have packages to go out. I have things here for a future live sale. I've got my computer. Now, my Coca-Cola wall is coming along. So that is pretty much done, which is amazing. I've got my grandparents' uh, barrister bookcase up here with uh, their wedding topper and some of the little treasures that I, I uh, got to pick up from their house, which is so incredibly special to me. So I've got all of that here and uh, I am working on getting just all of this room really tidied up because it is a mess right now. And I have a video coming out on this room later, so I will show it more in depth when it's actually clean. Uh, but I did get my records put in, which is wonderful. I've got uh, this desk here. This was Evelyn's father's desk. Uh, he was a doctor and he wrote prescriptions on this. But yeah, this is a major <laughs> mess right now, just filled with things that need to get organized and put away. So I am working on that. Uh, but that is really it. That's my home tour, and I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this. Uh, comment down below what your favorite piece was. Again, this video ran way longer than I expected, but of course, I'm a talker, and I have a lot of collections, so what you gonna do? <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for tuning into my apartment tour. I know this was a rather long video, but there's just so much to see, so many things I wanted to share with you, and I hope you really enjoyed getting an in-depth tour of my apartment and thank you all so much for always sending me such cool things to add to my collections. You guys are just fantastic. Now, of course, before my next video, I'll be seeing you over on Instagram at vintage underscore and underscore vinyl. And I hope as always folks that you will stay in, stay safe and binge YouTube. Bye bye everyone. What, what?